Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike. And in this old video, uh, what we are doing is we are delving. We're gonna have a, have a bit of an L delve into the world of online communities, of strange beliefs, and of reptilians. Finally, this video, it's about tree, tree characters, right? You have Barbara Rogers, you have Stephen Mineo, and the rather mysterious and enigmatic Sherry Schreiner. Weird online conspiracies have really kind of come to the forefront, I think, in recent years. They've become a lot more mainstream, to the point where it's kind of even hard to tell these days what's a conspiracy and what's reality. But all of these, you know, uh, batshit takes that we see online, they all owe it to good old Sherry Schreiner. She was like the original, everybody owes her a big old smoochy root, including this guy, because Sherry rules the seventh circle of hell. Or wait, no, wait, no, I'm the other guy. I, I think she's great. Not much is known about Sherry Schreiner. She's a very mysterious person. But this woman from Humble Roots who started out uh, shitting into a $2 microphone while 280p videos of reptilians played in the background, she somehow managed to like develop quite Quite the following, uh, dubbed Shrinerites by Tony Russo, whose book I'm using as a main source in this old video. And hello everybody, welcome to the show, I'm Sherry Shriner. A couple things I want to talk about, I'm hearing kind of an echo on this line. Sounds like I'm in space. We getting better? A little bit. Alright, a couple things I want to talk about. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't available to these shows last week, I was just... Wasn't available to get out of bed. She attracted quite a lot of people, and quite a lot of those people were not really altogether there. I mean, I suppose it kind of comes with the territory when you're talking about shape shifting, reptoids stealing people's skin, and then. See, I'm never really too sure what their end game is, though. Let's look, we'll talk about it, we'll get into it. Something about the New World Order, I understand. I mean, here, listen, come on, guys. Reptoids are pretty shit at taking over the world. Like, they've had thousands of years, apparently. I'm still here waiting, like, come on, lads, giddy up. So there is one part of this, which is the fascinating cult crock of shit. And then there's another part, which is a real-life gun and a lot of blood. And they were inexorably linked by vampire aliens, orgones, 12-pack, only 50 bucks. They hate my orgone. Who? Them. And if you don't know who they are, you're already one of them. They can be whoever you want to be. Guy cuts you off while you're driving? Reptilian. Delivery driver gives you the wrong order? Reptilian. Person talking too loud in the cinema? Guess what? Reptilian. Sick of these H and reptoids! Let's give it a go! Well, first off, uh, right, like all good true crime stories, we gotta start with a murder. Deep in the Pocono Mountains, literally beside a place called, uh, Mountain Pocono, lies the small area of Tobihanna, PA. It's a small, depressed town that has been stuck in a time loop where every day is 50 years ago. It's surrounded by parks and wilderness, where Eric Freen would have, uh, he would have loved it. And in Tobihanna lies the road of Laurel Drive. At 661 Laurel Drive, right opposite the Colba Township Volunteer Fire Company, lies a small, kinda sorta run-down little one-story house, formerly a trailer. Pretty nondescript place, one that fades from memory before your eyes have even moved on. It looks like it would have been dark inside with only a couple of small little windows, but dark inside was how those inside liked it. Away from prying eyes, you know. But like those those prying eyes with like the, the slits in them. Now on, where's your emergency? <laughs> I'm here at 611 Moral Drive, please. Six five five Okay, I need, I need you to calm down. What is going on? Well, my, my boyfriend, he had a gun. He grabbed me, and he told me to put the here. He grabbed me, and he told me to press the trigger. Oh my God! He's dead. He's dead. Oh, 
That call was made on the 15th of July 2017 at 2.38 a.m. And swiftly after, the Pocono Mountain Regional uh, Police, they rocked up to 661 Laurel Drive to see... To see the scene. It was a hot, humid morning and inside was a shithole, I guess you'd kind of, kind of say. The crime scene was in fact an apartment at the back of that house. A mouse would say they didn't have enough room. The place was, was kind of a cramped little dump. Inside it was dark and it stank and not just of the recently deceased. Blood and brains were kind of everywhere and on the ground lay the body of 32 year old Stephen Mineo. The screaming that was in the officer's ears was coming from 42 year old Barbara Rogers. She was sitting on the floor beside Stephen who lay there and he had a bullet entry wound uh, directly right smack in his forehead. From how it looked, um, it seemed like the gun, the handgun had been pressed against the front of his head while the back of his head was all over the bed. There was alcohol and pills strewn about the place and on the surface this seemed pretty clear cut. A domestic violence incident, uh, substance abuse, whatever else leads Barbara Rogers to either on purpose or accidentally shooting her partner in the head. That whatever else though would be an entire world of whatever else. Again, Barbara, my name is John Borman. I'm one of the detectives here. Barbara, this is a tape record. It tape records um, a voice. Is that right with you? Yes. Okay. Um, I know you went through a traumatic event tonight and I want to talk to you a little bit about that. You're not under arrest. Can you tell me exactly what happened tonight? Tonight? Yes. Um, he took the gun and started putting it into my hand. He goes, here, take it. Point it at me. Point it. He just starts grabbing it. Thing. You know, he put it in my hand and he was pointing at me and shoot it right now. That's when it went off, right there. Now Barbara said the handgun it went off by accident, but the investigators and the detectives had a little inkling that there was more here than meets the eye. Just how much more they had no clue. And so the police, they took Barbara back to the station to get her even in her shocked state, you know, two hours after she called 911 to try and tell the police and explain what happened. I understand that this was an accident, but I need you to be as specific as you can because we have to compare the scene to what you're telling us. Well, he took his gun. He just starts putting it in my hand and he's pointing it at his direction. It just went off. Now Barbara, who I can kind of only describe in this picture looks like she's melting. She had a bit of a meltdown out of the station. And the thing is, ever since he, um, this, there's a woman named Sherry Schreiner, and, um, okay, he used to be close friends with her, and he used to follow her. He was really good friends with her. She runs a religious cult, some type of weird religious cult, and Are she's you? on Facebook, and she talks about, like, aliens and stuff. Are, are either one of you two in a cult? Not anymore. See, we were both friends with her, but then one day at the blue, she just turned on us, you know? Now, speaking of body hacking, aliens, and telepathy, I mean, I'm sure all of that is in there somewhere. You gotta look after your bad self, right? Because, hey, for all we know, we don't have proof that reptoids don't exist. Just saying it like it is. So to ensure that online, you are protected from reptilians and their friends, or maybe from Sherry Shriner and the Shrinerites, you need to protect yourself. And that is where NordVPN enters the frame. NordVPN is the online service keeping you safe on the internet. With a single click, your IP address is hidden and you can be in any country you want to be. When I'm researching these like true crime stories, I often run into can't access the content in your location. All the time because a lot of us GDPR blocked. Well, guess what? I use NordVPN literally every time I'm researching stories so I don't run into that problem. And you know what? You can too. And with my special link, that is nordvpn.com slash that chapter, you get a deal that is just for you. Yeah. And that deal is a big old super sweet discount on a two year plan and also four months for free. Hard to get a better discount than for free. I mean, honestly, when Nord sent me all this information, I was like, you know what? This deal is too good for you. I was arguing against it, but they won out and they wanted to give you the best thing possible. So, all right, fine, I give up. And let's not forget to mention NordVPN's threat protection. With threat protection, you are safer than ever before against malicious websites. Those dang, dirty reptilian websites. Pop-ups, get out of here. And trackers, 
Not anymore. It'll keep you protected from threats on the web. Nobody will track you, so you're kind of inv invincible. And you can, like, teleport anywhere you want to be on the internet. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. You're kind of OP, actually. So once again, use my link in the description, that's nordvpn.com slash that chapter, to get a deal that is just for you. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this whole video. I hold them closely before I go to sleep. Now let's get back to the video. Stephen Minio was originally from New Jersey, someone who described himself as a survivalist who didn't need others, except when it came to money, rides, or kind of really anything. Getting a job just kind of really, just not really for him. Instead, he got by, survived on multi-level marketing jobs and, well, eBay. Apparently he was quite good with the old computers and would sell bits and dumpster dive and that kind of stuff. He did dream of joining up with the military, but his dad, Stephen Sr., he had been in the military and so he, for whatever reason, he heavily discouraged his son from joining up. Instead, Stephen himself, he fell, kind of ass over tea kettle, into the world of finding the, quote, truth, unquote. This was after he, I mean, he lived in New Jersey and he pretty much, 9-11 happened to pretty much right on his doorstep, so after that, he needs to know what really happened, what really happened on that day. He created his own website, well, blog, Truth Seeker Blog, and it was dedicated to Yahuwah and Yeshua, that's uh, God and Jesus, I understand. And Stephen was going down hole after hole after hole in all these just wackadoo crazy conspiracy theories about all sorts of things. Finding out what was really going on. He had been busy exposing the New World Order. Look at you! FEMA camps, the truth about 9-11, and the collapse. All the usual shit. Wow, the real truth about zombies. Now we're talking. Yes, this is literally the end days. I don't know how much time we have left before things get bad to where there is civil unrest, when the shit hits the fan. A lot of people are trying to warn you about these things. Most people that are aware of what's coming don't realize how bad it is really going to be. Prepare now! or regret it later. And all of this would eventually lead Stephen into the warm embrace of Sherry Schreiner. In fact, it was true Sherry Schreiner that Stephen and Barbara uh, met. They met on one of her Facebook groups. They started chatting away. You know, she was asking questions about the stuff Sherry talks about, which, <laughs> prepare yourself. Uh, and Stephen would answer. He was a big, he was like one of her like lieutenants. They would talk, they started talking. That then went to like voice conversations and phone calls. Eventually she started going up to meet Stephen and they, they fell in love, they began a relationship and they even, after a while, became uh, like husband and wife, like common law husband and wife. Barbara, she'd been in the military and she'd been married once before and had two kids. One with her ex-husband, one from before her ex-husband. One of the reasons her husband became her ex-husband was Barbara developing chronic depression and psychosis. She had also self-harmed before, including drinking bleach, which, um, yeah, that's not great. That's not great. I think she had some shit going back to childhood. Eventually, Stephen and Barbara, you know, they would move together to essentially the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. They chose the Pocono Mountains kind of area because, well, that's where Stephen thought, you know, when the shit hits the fan, when the New World Order starts cracking down, you know, I'll be right here, so, like, it's fine. I can prepare. It was going to be his base of operations and all that. This little one room apartment. Good luck. So Barbara and Stephen, they met via Sherry Schreiner and then Stephen would end up dead. And Barbara would mention Sherry and her cult quite a few times after. When me and him got together, she started turning on both of us. What cult? Was there, is there a name for that cult? No, they're just, they call themselves Oregon Warriors. Oregon? Oregon Warriors, yes. Like the state of Oregon? Or Not just... Oregon. O-R-G-O-N-E. So who is uh, Sherry Schreiner? Well, that's not an easy question to answer, I'm going to be honest with you. Well, if you go back a couple of years on that chapter, and you look back at that Conspiracy Captain video I made, it's essentially that sort of shite about reptoids. Serious. Full on. It's kind of comical until something like this happens. But yeah, she was 110%. The aliens are running the show, guys. Politicians. Celebrities. All of them. They're all aliens, so... I don't know what you, what you can do about it. The entire deep state shadow government is run by the reptiles. They are, they live. Hello folks, so check this out. Two reptilians standing right in front of Steph Curry at the NBA Finals games. Look at her eyes, look at his eyes. 
You got the Reptoids, you got the Aliens, you got the New World Order, and then above them, straight from H-E Double Hockey Sticks, was the D-Man, and it was a war. Uh, you know, uh, apparently, so... Better batter up. I, I, I've been the mouthpiece of that agenda for the last almost 16 years now. Alerting people to who and what they are and exposing their agenda and getting people prepared for what's coming. Support our war against the aliens, reptilians, Nephilim giants, and all those who have fallen and hate the most high. They hate me on 420. Today's show, Wendy Williams clone malfunctions and collapses on the floor. Our first caress. As you can see this. Justin Bieber shapeshifted into a reptilian while greeting fans who had waited for him to arrive at Perth Airport in Australia, according to hundreds of witnesses who took to social media. So all of his people were already pretty much at that time reptilians. What we know is what reptilians, we call them lizards. They're not just coming in on Planet X, Nibiru, and other huge space objects and starships and starfleets, but they also live in underground cities and assimilate into our society's soul-scalping humans. Oh shit. And breeding their own hybrids among us. We can stop them. Well, holy shit, when you put it like that. All these different invasions of these creatures is going to be happening. All of it. Yeah, there's going to be giants here. I've had visions of them. And, it, and it's horrifying. See, the thing about these mad scones is, um, you can't just believe in one conspiracy theory. You have to believe in, in for a penny. You got to believe all the conspiracies for this to kind of work out. And, and that's one thing, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a flat earther, I hate flat earthers. I didn't kick them off my Facebook list, I have no patience for their stupidity. That's what Sherry Schreiner was espousing from the middle of nowhere, Ohio. Now Sherry, when asked, who is Sherry, said that she suffered from night terrors as a young'un. It seems she believed these night terrors to be real, and that the devil had sent these creatures after her. Fair enough. She was born into a God-fearing family in 1965, conservative with a capital C. I mean, no movie theaters, no entertainment, it was lights out in bed by 8pm. She would attend Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, and that's where she began her talking on the radio career. She got a job at the station in the area, and later she transferred to Kent State University, and became director of their student radio station. She got degrees in criminal justice, journalism, and political science. But did she? See, this is a lot of her describing her own biography, so... I mean, it seems to be backed up, but you can take probably a little bit of this with it. Though she would later say she hated uh, organized religion because she believed organized religion to be a New World Order plot to control us. So there you go. These are the only pictures we have of Sherry Schreiner, but her voice, we have in abundance. Though one part of her story is, is pretty interesting, she says that she moved to Washington DC to try and get a job with like CNN or kind of big news stations and she couldn't. She couldn't get a job with them even though she had a, you know, a couple of degrees and, and a good bit of work experience behind her. This led her to realize that the Reptoids were acting against her the whole time. After that she says she got married, had a kid, and quote, I embarked on intense research over the next five years into spiritual warfare, hell, demons, Satan, and continued into my favorite areas of end time events and last days prophecies. Well, that's kind of all you really need to know. It seems like when she couldn't get a job, she was like, well, the whole system's against me. And guess what? You're all fucking reptiles. She took rejection pretty personally. The mainstream media is the CIA. They are part of the deep state. These aren't just anchors uh, that they get these jobs because they went to college. None of them went to college. They're all idiots. They're all clones and replacements. You know, old school journalist, you went to school, got a journalism degree, worked your way up the ladder. No, that doesn't happen anymore. And it was her which led to Barbara ending up in a police interrogation room in 2017. So where was he when he was saying that? In our house, right oh, where, there. Where in the house? On, on the bed? On the... We were beside the bed. We were standing there. Standing up? Yeah, we were okay. standing up. Standing, standing by the bed. Did it go off by accident or... It went off on accident. I was actually trying to let go, you know. He was telling me, you know, I want you to point this, you know. Uh, how far would you say the gun was from him when it went off? Maybe this far? Was it? Okay. So the gun from his forehead was about that far? Yes. Now, Barbara, when speaking to the police after Stephen's death, her statements indicated a number of inconsistencies. 
From how far the gun was when it went off, she said the gun was like maybe a foot away, but you know, the marks on his forehead on Stephen's body, that indicated it was like pressed against them. To where Stephen's body was, you know, she said he was standing when the gun went off, but from the trajectory, it looked like he had been sitting with his head against the bed. And I, and I understand why, why you're trying, your mind is trying to change it, but in reality, you know what happened. And now, like, if you want me to believe you're sorry about this, you have to tell the exact facts. The police really did believe that Barbara was not being truthful about what happened. But then again, she had been lied to for quite some time. He did this on purpose. I would never shoot him on purpose, but uh, now I, I think it's possible he could have been sitting on the ground, you know? Everything just happened so fast. That... See how many times you've changed the story already with me now? Like, it's easier to tell it right the first time than to change it a couple times. Okay, mm -hmm. So you put the gun right up to his head. And then pull the trigger, right? Um, at this point, we're going to be charging with um, criminal homicide. Um, ha a lot of what you're telling me is a lie, and I know that. Barbara was arrested and charged with Stephen's murder, whatever happened there. Or whatever Sherry believed happened there because she had her own, um, she had her own pretty good idea of what was really going on. Investigators in Monroe County believe she shot and killed her boyfriend, Stephen, Stephen Minio. The killing happened at their home along Laurel Drive near Toby Hanna last month. Rogers claims Minio had problems with an online cult centering around aliens and the end of the world. She also claims Minio wanted to die. Rogers is now locked up in Monroe County. So this appears to be like clone number four of Barb Rogers that I know of. Clearly you can see she's morphing, she's synthetic. Look at the palms, folks. Look at the palm of her hands from wrist. Look at her wrist. Her face is melting. It's very blurry. Her hand morphs in and out in all of her pictures. Now this clearly is a 42 year old woman, but it's not the one that was dating Steve Maneo. Much older looking woman. Look at these pictures. Look at the contrast. This was taken. These are the ones she had with Steven online. These are her mug shots when she was arrested. Two different people, folks. I mean, come on, folks. These are two different people. The one dating Steve, the one arrested. What's going on here? What's the game? Total PSYOP, folks. Total PSYOP. Subscribe to my channel, folks. Become a patron. Become a supporter of my ministry. Uh, a couple things, then, because at least your people getting into the aspects of who are aliens, what is Bigfoot? And I've been dealing with Bigfoot for a while now. Um, and, and they're all over the place, folks. They're, they're in the forest areas because there's portals dimensional doorways through port through the forest areas that they can come in and out of their dimensional beings anybody home well the haters are going to come out of the woodwork and i really don't care i don't care i'm dealing with haters for years you know what everything i've said is wrong i've changed my mind i've changed my mind already that's how much of sherry shriner i've listened to i changed my mind she's great the reptoids are real and i've had it up to here with those scaly bastards Clearly the tinfoil hat has given me superpowers. And guys, remember last time I talked about reptoids? I talked about some of their characteristics? Let me refresh your memory about reptiles with human skin. One of the characteristics of a reptoid is the predominance of green or hazel eyes, but sometimes also blue eyes. So just eyes. True red or reddish hair, gingers, at it again. Deep compassion for the fate of mankind. You care about other human beings, you fucking alien. UFO connections. Love of space and science. Alien contacts. Yeah, it's usually a giveaway if your friends are aliens. And those Godzilla movies, reptilian propaganda. I mean, I haven't looked anymore into that specific sentence I just said, but it sounds about right to me. Why do you think chocolate bars are getting smaller, but the price remains the same? Reptoids. Ooh. Why do you think my wife left me? Or should I say, the woman the Reptoids replace my wife with. They did a pretty good job though, she looked human. On the inside, look at the governments around the world. Look how inept they are, they clearly have lizard brains! So honestly guys, I've had to listen to so much of this fucking bitch Sherry Shiner and her too hot for radio talk show that I think I'm actually going insane. Like it's pure dribble, it's the same talking points over and over and over and over again. It's like public access TV, it's like, you know, just spouting whatever kind of random shit enters your, ha your head uh, with no editor. So I don't know how people really put this on. You know, it's tough, folks, still for me. And I know people are saying, we get on to other events. 
Uh, you know what? Yeah. Um, no, because I still have things to say. She really loved the sound of her own voice. Sadly, a good few others did too. Listening to Sherry's broadcasts, it feels like you're trying to walk upstream through a raging current. It's a constant barrage. And just when you think you've begun to understand one theory, she throws another at you like you've been on board the whole time. Sherry talks about the coming battles and the coming wars, but listening to her, it's clear she has no plans to be a part of them. She just sends her minions and takes the credit. But she would never leave her little Ohio house. The real war she wages is the psychological one on you, how she batters, lies, and manipulates her listeners. It's a war she won against many people, but only the ones who were already willing to lose. It was people looking for confirmation of the wild shit they always suspected was going on in the world, and for someone to tell them what to do. Someone who has all the answers for them, and listen here, all right, great, thanks. But not only that, it wasn't just someone who had all the answers for them, it was someone who could sell them all the answers. Because yes, you guessed it, dollar dollar bills, Sherry was right it. See, one answer to your problem was Orgones, my friend, yeah. Orgones. See, the Shrinerites also called themselves Orgone Warriors, and they had Orgone Blasters. Holy shit, does the military know? What are these Orgone Energy Blasters, I hear you ask? Well, big dog, what don't they do? That's, that's the real, that's what you should be asking. They will keep chemtrails from sticking over your home. They also destroy aliens, and demons won't come near them. They kill zombies and evil beings too. Hello folks, this is Sherry Schreiner. And today I want to talk about Orgone and how to use Orgone as a self-defense weapon. And, you know, we've got every day we're dealing with chemtrails and microwave weapons. If, if you know, you still want to stay a critic or whatever of Orgone, that's fine, you know. But those with eyes to see and ears to hear, you know, that Orgone is definitely a weapon for his army to get busy doing in these last days. He's calling forth people to get busy planning this. We know there's an alien and UFO invasion coming to America. I certainly don't want these annex in my neck of the woods. Apparently, the guy who rediscovered Orgone Energy was killed for it in 1957. His name was Wilhelm Reich, an Austrian psychoanalyst. He was also a huge fraud, or uh, maybe that's just what the Illuminati wants you to think. Dummy. He's the guy who coined the term Orgones, which is some kind of universal life energy force, like a life stream or something like that. So you know what, you read through Sherry Schreiner's website, you'll find that the science of Orgone blasters is very clear, all this nerdy stuff is very clearly explained for someone who doesn't know anything about it. I'm in. Where can I go about purchasing Orgone blasters and that kind of paraphernalia to fight these zombies and aliens and all those other bastards? Well, you can get a 12 pack for 50 bucks, or a power blaster for 35. You know, you could actually blow uh, a small fortune on these things Sherry is selling, or or you could donate either 50, 100, or 200 bucks. You get a t-shirt too. Puck the NWO. So this is what Sherry was espousing uh, online. She was living in somewhere in the middle of n nowhere, Ohio, but the internet just spread her reach, stuff like YouTube, her radio talk show, and so she was picking up these people from all over America, all over the world, really, and creating this little community of, I mean, the amount of insane stuff, it's, 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 the, the list would be very long of all of the insane bullshit, you know, that, that they talk about. What they are hoping to happen will probably never really happen. The apocalypse, oh, it's actually, sorry, it's, it's next week, I actually got my dates wrong, but be ready to go when it happens, it's happening, I'm telling you. It always changes. It changes because it's a Ponzi scheme. It doesn't matter that none of this shit makes sense, and you'll, listening to Sherry, you'll hear 50 things that contradict each other. Multiple things can be true at the same time, no matter how much they can to each other. You're wasting your time trying to talk to these people. And that just angered me. For all this child trafficking and satanic rituals they're planning to do next week in Cleveland for the RNC. And they're gonna do the same thing next week at the DNC. And so they keep amping up and amping up their audience. You know, Sherry knew exactly what she was doing. She knew exactly what, what was gonna happen. These lunatics would eventually do something horrendous, even last year. In August, 2021, a California man, Matthew Coleman, who was a surfing instructor in Santa Barbara, he murdered his two young children, a two-year-old son and a 10-month-old daughter. He drove them to Mexico and shot a spear fishing gun into their chests. He did so because he believed his children had serpent, reptilian, DNA, and that they would grow up to be monsters. 
I used to cover conspiracy theories like a lot more, like the kind of conspiracy cap and stuff. It's this kind of reason why I stopped. Well, I mean, I don't think the Flat Earthers killed anybody. Did they? Did they kill anybody? Just themselves. And the cult surrounding Sherry Shriner didn't just lead to Stephen's death. You know, it didn't just lead to one death, there were two. So Sherry Shriner was building up her platform starting in the early 2000s, attracting all sorts to her YouTube and her Facebook, all her socials, and her radio show, two of those being Barbara Rogers and Steve Mineo. And Sherry knew how to use these people, how to manipulate them, and essentially play with them, it seems like, for fun. See, shortly before his death, Steve started getting these anonymous death threats uh, on social media from all these different characters who were sending him messages saying they were vampires and they were gonna drink his blood and yada yada yada, like literally straight from the Sherry Shriner script book. They would send him pictures claiming, you know, pictures of where he lived, claiming that, you know, they were watching him. Of course, a two second search would show that these pictures were taken from Google Images. But yeah, this started to push Steven over the edge. The other was acting against him now and he had proof. He had messages. He asked for help from his Orgone warrior buddies and Sherry said to Steven she would send him angels to protect him. Now little did Steven know Sherry herself was the one sending him these messages. Or at least it's believed that it was. Definitely people in her close circle, the language they used was like clear as day. Could only be them. The reason for this was that Barbara had once posted on Facebook that she liked steak tartare. Right, you know, raw steak or whatever, and that was enough to convince Sherry that Barbara was a vampire witch. Or at least, I mean, I don't know if Sherry was convinced of anything, but she started calling her that. A lizard person. Okay, folks, I want to go over Barbara Mineo. This is the Barbara we knew, the vampire witch who liked feces and raw hamburger meat. She craves it all the time. Uh, delicacy for her. That's because that's what they do in just blood. They have a craving for meat. They're all the same. See, Barbara didn't quite lick Sherry's balls like the others did, didn't quite kiss her ass, and Sherry, well, if you want to be on Sherry's team, you better puck her up. So the accusations against Barbara began. She was a witch. She wasn't human. Nobody really knew her. Nobody was talking to her. Nobody was... She was staying hidden in the way, way background. And that's why I didn't have any issues with her, because she never opened her mouth at that point. But then we started noticing some of the stuff she was posting on her Facebook, and some of the people and associations she had in her friends list. And I was like, wait a minute, something's not right here. Something is really not right here. And when you look at her pictures, she had no light. She had no aura. She's like a dead carcass. It's like, what's that about? And I recognized some of the names on her list, which was red flags for me because I knew they were super soldiers. And she posted this post about craving raw meat and this ghastly picture of raw hamburger meat with some other things, but most notably off to the side of it was a pile of feces. Yeah, yum. That sounds good. Steven, he sided with Barbara. He, he, she was his, you know, his common law wife. And, you know, he, she's not a witch. He even told the others, guys, listen, I did an, an orgone test with Barbara where she held the orgones. And, you know, she was an evil being. She wouldn't be able to. And she was. So he said, that's proof she's not evil. And, well, they didn't buy that. So Sherry's admitting the shit she sells does not work. So Stephen siding with Barbara meant he was in the shit with Sherry. A Sherry who was trying to break them up by sending angels to protect him from these mysterious stalkers. This eventually led to Stephen being outcast from the group. Stephen, who had made videos for her, who was one of her biggest supporters, she said he was, he was like a son, that sort of thing. Sherry burned true people, and Stephen was not the first, but that's how seriously people took the bullshit she was spouting. Kelly Pingilly had been another evangelist for Sherry. She donated all the time, she volunteered for Sherry, she did it all. In 2012, 22-year-old Kelly of Michigan, one of Sherry's biggest allies, took 30 sleeping pills and never woke up. On the night of December 28th, 2012, she left a note in her home, took a bottle of sleeping pills and walked into the snowy winter landscape of Michigan. The following morning, a group found footprints in the snow and followed them. 
finding Kelly. Kelly had killed herself because she thought she would be reborn into the next level of spirituality. Now, maybe she was, but she did believe she would go back and wake up in her own body. You know, she didn't believe she was killing herself, but she died alone in the woods with an orgone necklace around her neck. Now, Sherry, upon hearing this, was licking her chops. She would later claim Kelly had been murdered by NATO because, of course, NATO. This is proof, you know, the Illuminati, the New World Order, they're out to get him. What more do you need to know? This is proof that Sherry is speaking the true true. It was a super soldier that had been assigned to kill me several years ago. And you know, my assassins come and go. I've had assassins after me since George Bush Jr. and Dick Cheney hired the number one assassin in America to kill me. And how I know this is because the assassin told me himself many years later, because he couldn't kill me. He told me all the problems he had every time he tried to kill me. <laughs> I'm protected by the Most High. And when Bush and Obama was president, I was number two on his death list. Chavez was number one, president of Venezuela. They're trying to shut up. You guys are now the victims. They're out to get you. Being outcast from Sherry drove Stephen to kill himself with Barbara's help. He'd come to realize she was a fraud, and he started making videos calling her out. He tried to expose her, even hiring a private detective at one point to try and find her. Dude, I am so fucked up in the head right now, it's not even funny, man. Her little minions keep texting me uh, on Facebook. They keep repeating all the bullshit garbage they're saying on her. Oh, she eats raw meat or something. Oh, blah, 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 blah. They lost their fucking mind. This led to Sherry sicking her followers on him and on Barbara. And then, on the night he died, Stephen and Barbara got drunk, did some pills. Stephen, he was in a bad place, and he died. Whether he kind of forced Barbara to, to shoot him or she willingly did, we may never know. It seems like Barbara herself didn't know what really happened and how he ended up dead. Okay, it all started. I know that we were on Facebook, and I think this might have been what triggered it. He saw a bunch of bad comments from somebody named Marianne, putting that, you know, that I'm a witch and a reptile. And I think when he saw it, he got really angry. And he commented, like, a whole bunch of comments. And I could tell him, look, just forget the whole thing. Don't worry about it. I think that might have been what triggered him to be this way. But then he's like, come on, let's go to the bar and, you know, have a little bit of fun. And he seemed normal. You know, he had, like, one or two drinks. Okay, and then when we came home, he goes, you know, I need to practice shooting my gun. He walked into the woods. He fired a few rounds. You know, we walked back into the house. All of a sudden, he took the gun and started putting it into my hand. He goes, here, take it. Point it at me. Well, that's Barbara's story. Anyway, her story has plenty of inconsistencies in it. But I think it was the truth. Stephen was pretty, pretty troubled. I think his mind couldn't wrap around what was happening to him and being outcast from Sherry Shriner's group. After Stephen's death, Sherry, of course, just like with Kelly, used it as proof. Barbara was a witch. The reptilians are fucking at it again. Boy, you know, kind of got the shoes knocked out of your feet Saturday, didn't you, huh? The news of Barbara just killing Steve Maneo. You know, Steve wasn't involved in a cult. And I'm not a cult, and I'm not a cult leader. Everything she said was a lie. I know exactly what happened that night. She hunted Steve down. He was actually shot at least two, maybe three times. She pulled him by the hair and pulled him up and then put the gun to his head. Because she was what I kept warning him she was. She started the Patreon still today where you can pay from 150 a month to over $1,000 a month. And for that, you get a whole shout out and exclusive content, which appears to be more of her ramblings on the platform. Four people are still paying at the time of this video. And after Stephen Minio's death, Sherry Shriner's exposure grew exponentially. Like, this was in the news everywhere. Sherry was responding for comments. She was doing the interviews. She was trying to spread the word of her Orgone warriors. Like, this put Sherry into spotlight. This is a Sherry Shriner with us on WILK. Hi, Sherry. Hi, how you doing? Doing well. Uh, first of all, before we get into this specific incident, can you give me a little bit of, of your background and how you came to the belief system that you have these days? Well, you know, I was born in a Christian home. I went to a Christian high school, Christian college. I attended Liberty University. She began posting a lot more to you. This was exactly what Sherry had hoped would happen. 
and she used it to her full advantage. She was once again licking her chops at the idea of new souls coming to her for guidance. The very barb I warned him about that he wouldn't listen to me about. And look at the vampire teeth, because this is what Steve saw shortly before he died when she morphed her huge teeth out. This is Steve before Barbara. Good kid, good looking kid, nice kid. And this is what she did to him. This was uh, about two weeks before he died. Look at this. What the heck is that? That's scary. I don't even know what to say about that. That's just, that's just weird. That's crazy. Uh, unfortunately though, womp womp, it didn't last for Sherry. Just when she had achieved what she always wanted, which was spotlight, which was attention, which was her gospel being spread to thousands of new people, it ended. Six months after Stephen's death, Sherry followed. On the 7th of January, Sherry died of a big old heart attack one month after her 52nd birthday. Sherry, she was a heavy smoker, she lived in backwards, middle of nowhere Ohio, and I guess one day, you know, it just... Or that's what they want you to think. It's a bit of a limp dick ending to the story, I'm afraid. Of course, some of her followers believe she's gone off somewhere else, whatever they pull out of their asses to make themselves feel better. She was taking a shit and an angel came down and like, swept her up to heaven before the devil could, could get her and she'll one day come back and yada yada yada. If she does come back, hi Sherry, if you see this. A Monroe County woman claims her involvement in an online alien cult led to the death of her boyfriend. Barbara Rogers is charged with shooting Stephen Minio at a home near Toby Hanna in July 2017. As for Barbara Rogers, she went on trial for the death of Steve Mineo. Barbara was ultimately convicted of third degree murder. She was sentenced to 15 to 40 years in prison. She since appealed her conviction. Her appeal was denied. You know, I only kind of scratched the surface of the whole Sherry Shriner cult. Like this, this is a, there's a lot here guys, like a lot. And I mean like a lot, a lot. I'd be here all day, it's a rabbit hole within a rabbit hole. But it is an absolutely batshit story, which ended in real murder. And Sherry would still be going, of course, to this day if she, if she was still alive. Batshit being the apt word. So that about kind of wraps up this whole video. I'm kind of not really too sure what the, what the message of it really is. I mean, I, I guess if you, if you, if you see somebody kind of spouting this kind of shit, um, you know, about reptoids, all that kind of stuff, maybe just be, you know, you know, stop that now, you know? And then you can unhinge your jaw like a python and devour them. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with me watching this whole video. I hope you found it as batshit and bizarre as I did. Um, but yeah, here, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next old video. But until then, please take care of each other. Take care of yourselves because I love you. Mike out.